It's my feel good breakfast show. We've been having the most stunning morning here on S3 and my lovely, it just got even more stunning because we've got Miss SA in the building, okay? I am talking about the queen who broke barriers and where on the 10th of August, we witnessed absolute history being made where our very first hearing impaired Miss SA was named Mia LaRue. She's taken the crown, she's standing tall and from being a young little baby whose life absolutely changed when the, her community rallied and raised funds so that she could get a cochlear implant operation to where she is now. We're we're about to learn more about the queen that we love. The queen is going to be representing us on international stages and our head girl of the country. Everybody, Mia LaRue! <laughs> oh, thank you so much for that sweet introduction. It is true, my Mia. Are oh. you good? No, I'm amazing. How are you amazing. doing? Amazing, amazing. Mia, how has everything been going? There's been so many interviews and everything. Ooh, there's been a lot of interviews, yes. but I think it has been wonderful and mm. I've been enjoying all of them. Yeah. And everyone is so kind oh. and willing to learn. Yes. And like embracing the education and the awareness surrounding all of it. So I'm very grateful. I love it. Mia, yeah. I want us to start from the beginning because obviously that's where anyone's story, you know, starts in yes. terms of where they are now. Yes. Did you ever see this for yourself? Was this what you were dreaming of when you were a little girl? When I was a little girl, I did not believe that someone like me can become a Miss South Africa. Yes. Because when you are born with or you have a hearing disability mm. there is so much stress and doubt and fear about can you be independent are you mm. capable of having this future and all of that and i that is what i was surrounded by yes. but as the years passed by and i saw that the south africa is becoming more inclusive in terms of who they crown i was like okay maybe i stand the chance yes. And then I just decided to take that step because I also know I'm not doing it just for myself. I'm yeah. doing it for so many others who have the same fears and the same same doubts and the same challenges. And now here I am. Yeah, you are, girl. <laughs> I was going to say, you didn't just stand a chance. You were coming for the crown, which you yes. have now. Yes. Yeah, I was. Uh, yes. And I want to obviously ask you about, you know, just in terms of the journey, because like you said, you know, you started to see that things were opening up a little bit more, which is what we want in this world. Yes. But what was the age for you where you realized that you will succeed no matter what your circumstance? That is a difficult question to mm. answer because... There are moments where you are like, I will succeed no matter what. Yes. And then there is a hard moment. You know, like life goes up and down. Yeah. It's not always like a sudden moment where you're like, I can do this. Mm. And I think as you go through life, you go in your confidence and sometimes you get knocked down a bit, but then you build yourself back up. But I think this journey has really even shown and surprised me in how capable I am. Yeah, girl, you're more than capable, okay? <laughs> you're Aww. about to go and be on international stages, which I think we're also proud of that it's going to be you representing us. Yes. But let's talk about this. You had your very first pageant that now led you to this. What was that first pageant that you entered and what made you decide to actually be like, okay, I want to go and do this? So my first pageant that I entered was Miss Tracy at my high school. Aww, yeah. how old were you? Yeah, I, w I, was, I was 18. Oh, okay, that's so cute, yes. <laughs> yes, no, it was only open to the matrix. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I entered, I did have this dream of Miss South Africa, but it was like a pipe dream. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a realistic dream. It was just one of those things that make you smile, but you don't really ponder about it seriously. Mm -hmm and what it could mean. And then as I grew up and became more experienced and experienced life a bit more, I became more aware of what it could mean. Sure. So you go through life. That's beautiful. And especially knowing that, you know, you decided I'm going in, not just for myself, but for everybody else who's yeah. possibly like me, which is amazing. But yeah. let's talk about this. You are obviously Mia LaRue. Our Miss South Africa now, but there was a Mia LaRue before Miss South Africa who's with us even right now. Yes. What are your qualifications and what was Mia LaRue doing before Miss SA? So Mia LaRue, before Miss South Africa, I was doing marketing management for a startup company okay. where I had to wear many different hats mm -hmm. because it was a small, it's a very small business and I had to do scientific experiments to help with product development. Oh, wow. It was very exciting, like help develop face mask, help develop agricultural products. That's fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun and it's currently all undergoing trials. Mm. 
So it's very exciting where it can come from that. And then I was also st studying marketing management, but I decided to put that on hold for the year of the South Africa. Yeah. Because I want to get the year with both hands and build a beautiful foundation for the rest of my life. Aww. And I also have a qualification or a certificate in nutrition mm -hmm. from the Sports Science Institute of South Africa and a diploma as an exercise specialist from ETA College. Cool. And I was the top student. So oh, come on! Yeah, so nice. you're used to being at the top. You're used to just being there. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Like, I know how hard I work, mm -hmm. but even when you do well, there is always still a bit of doubt. And yes. you know what I mean? I'm just a human being, but I try my best. You are an incredible human being. That is Thank an you. example of what it means to keep trying. Yes. Like you say, where you just need to give your best. And yes. can I actually tell you about a moment, Mia? When we were walking the red carpet, going to go and watch you guys, yes. I remember they asked me on the red carpet, and they were like, what do you want to see from Miss Essay? And I used the word, I want to see just like a Miss Essay that brings more inclusivity. And at the time, I didn't, you didn't know, even know. I didn't know what I was saying, but I was just like, and I was like, no, all of our Miss Essays have brought inclusivity, but I want someone who's going to bring something different. And literally, that is who you are, bringing that inclusivity. And I think that it is so beautiful that you're allowing so many people, whether it is them being differently abled or just, you know, someone who's ever felt marginalized or marginalized rather, you are allowing people to feel inclusive just by you taking the title, which I think is so beautiful. Oh, thank you. That's very really special. You are, you are special. <laughs> <laughs> so and are you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Miss Essay said I'm special. Oh my yeah. goodness. But Mia, this is such a beautiful journey that's about to be because of course you're somebody who genuinely has such big things and big plans. So we're going to find out about those in a little bit, okay? Okay, okay. 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 Mia LaRue is not going anywhere, South Africa, because our queen is actually still going to be with, with us, rather for a little bit more so don't don't you dare switch the dial don't you dare take a break we want you to stick around with us because there's still so much more right here on your feel good breakfast show for now though kate tz what's good well, we are so excited just considering the fact that we have miss south africa in the building and of course we got to touch on that in particular because isn't she just leading with what South Africa's or should be about anyway? Oh, Empathy, completely. Compassion, inclusivity. Fortitude, the bravery oh. to take that opportunity. It's my feel good breakfast show. I love it when we get to sit down with history makers, people who have allowed their names to stay in books for the rest of history. And this is why today we are sitting down with Mia LaRue, the first hearing impaired Miss Essay ever. And also, she's so hilarious. Oh, Mia, <laughs> are you so good? Thank you, I'm amazing. How are you? I'm, I'm all the better for having you next to me. <laughs> I feel royal, I feel excited. But Mia, you're gonna have to help me out here now because yeah. apparently I was told that your first four words were, see, I can't even remember, I have to look now. Kijk daar, wit wolke. Did I yes, say that right? Yes, yes. yes. Which is, look there, white clouds, ne? Yes. And this is the thing about you, is that you are somebody who is not having your head in the clouds, but you're grounded more than anything else. Which is why I need to ask you, you know, in terms of your journey on Crown Chasers, how did you stay not just so grounded, but also what made you keep going? Because it wasn't an easy journey. No, it wasn't an easy journey at all. Mm. It took a lot from all of us, but for me personally, it was my why and my purpose oh. that made me push through and persevere. Because I, I will keep saying this, the, the reason that I was here was for myself and for others who have felt the same way, yeah. of feeling different and excluded. And it really has put the fire under me and it is really the reason I kept pushing through. I love it. Because and I think when you fight for something so much bigger than yourself, mm. you also will fight so much harder. Oh, man. And Mia, you're doing so, so gracefully, which I think is the most beautiful thing. Yeah. And this is why I love that everyone is so willing to learn. And thank you for allowing us to learn. And if you do not know Expresso Family, it is a huge thank you to Lisejo Signs, who is signing for us in Cape Town, as we have this beautiful conversation with our brand new Miss SA. And of course, Mia, with you, you're someone who has really great people around you, which I think is always so important. So speak to me about that. What is the importance of community for you and what do those people mean to you? It really does take a village to help someone. So many people ask me who has my biggest support they've been. Mm. And for me, I always say I can't pinpoint yeah. because everyone plays a role. And if I have to speak about every single person that plays a role, 
we will be chatting until next year. Yes, 100%. Yeah, like, everyone has such a unique pl part to play mm. in someone's, like, journey. Yes. And for me, every single person who had their part to play from photographer, photographers, makeup artists, mm. people who support me, friends, people I can just chat with about my fears and my doubts, people who built me up. Yeah. People who install values in me, like my parents, like all of them play such a big part. And then the ones just cheering for me, small things, the ones who help me yeah. with getting a cochlear implant, Aww. who actually really didn't have to, but each person that has put a hand towards helping me. Mm. Like for me, my gratitude is to all of them. Yes, and it has been such a beautiful puzzle that came together, all of the pieces being all of those people. Exactly. Yeah, and this is the thing, Mia, you mentioned how for you, you were doing this for a greater purpose, for something bigger than yourself. And I think that even in these days where we're getting to know you, we're getting to understand just how much what your win has done and is doing for people out there. And this is why a message came through on the WhatsApp line that said, so, so proud and happy that she won, where she's showing being deaf or hard of hearing is not an obstacle or barrier, where every day we, the deaf or hard of hearing, feel excluded. Now, since Mia winning is now showing more reality that she mentioned, proudly be deaf and be South African. Clearly, she's confident and a strong woman where she mentioned excluded. Therefore, we, the deaf community in South Africa, are extremely so happy for Mia LaRue and more opportunities will be opening more doors for our deaf and hard of hearing in South Africa and it's been made inclusive. That's you. That's what you did. Yes. yes. <laughs> and Mia, this is why I want to ask you, you know, with your community, you know, here with us, especially because we're celebrating you and celebrating this incredible yes. history mark. I want to know what is your message of hope to them? My message of hope is to not give up and that things are possible even when you don't always think it is possible. Mm. If you have a purpose and a dream, it's there for a reason. Yes. And you are strong enough to go after that dream. And I am also here to help create a space of inclusivity. Yes. And I am so excited with everyone who wants to work with me to work towards that better and more inclusive future. Come on. Mm. And speaking of which, a lot of those people are watching right now, right? Your possible, yeah. you know, people who are going to be with you on this journey. So tell us, because obviously on Saturday, you said that you definitely wanted to make, you know, different campaigns, do things that are yes. going to allow everyone to feel included. What are some of those things that you're hoping to do? So some of the projects that I already have started planning out is with, the Department of Women, Youth and Persons of Disabilities. Oh, wow. I know the Department of Disabilities have vocalized to me that I really want captions on news bulletins. Yes. And that is something I wholeheartedly agree with, as I also have been excluded from the news mm -hmm. and just staying up to date with all of it. So I really want to help create that change because I do believe it is achievable. Yes. And I also would like to start reaching out to Google community, starting in Oatswick in my hometown. Yes, girl! I already have spoken with Rotary Oatswick and the Business Chamber of Oatswick with some small projects that we can start getting or we can start doing the big. And it's and only day three. Help. Yes, continue. Sorry, I'm saying it's only day three and you've already spoken to people. Yes. I love that. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Now you have to be prepared. Yes. And... We will be doing small things like giving an elder woman, elderly woman, a pair of glasses, things she can knit and earn an income, mm. empowering communities to have gardens so they can have healthy food to eat and that they can sell and earn an income. Yeah. So there are lots of little small things we can do as well. Beautiful. Ah, you. Mia, I, I know your reign is going to be one for the books. And I also want to ask you, because of course, like we said, it's been a journey. And this was one that started from when you entered that first pageant, but also from the moment you walked into that journey of being on Crown Chasers. What would you say has been the biggest lesson that you've learned over the last couple of weeks and even months? For me, the biggest lesson that I've learned personally is if you keep focusing on where you are challenged, if you keep focusing on the things that make it hard, you actually make it harder for yourself. Sure. And sometimes you have to just focus on the positivity. You have to learn to have fun. You need to mm. learn to be lighthearted about it. 
and be lighthearted about your challenges and find joy. Yeah. Because that will also give you some strength and help the journey be easier for you. Yes. yes. Oh, beautiful, Mia. You are incredible. I literally keep saying that you were born for a time such as this because that's what history makers are. They are people that allow everybody else to see what is possible, but more than anything else, believe in their dreams. So thank you for that because thank you've you. done that, yes, for the deaf community, but also I feel for so many of us. And we appreciate you and we can't wait to see all the incredible things you do. Oh, thank you. That is very sweet. You are the sweetest. <laughs> thank you. I mean, I'll see you again soon. So yeah, we'll yeah. Each other. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, me and Mia are going to continue having a lovely conversation here. But South Africa, we can be so proud because honestly and truly, we are represented by the best of the best. Like I said earlier on, she's going to go on and show the rest of the world what South Africa is made of. And we can be indeed 100% behind her with confidence because we absolutely have a queen in front of us. Your new Miss South Africa, Mia. LaRue. Right about now, though, Graham is doing the things in Cape Town. Hi, Graham.